How you doing, my man, Jimmy? Great to see you. I'm glad to see you smiling. I know it's, it's weight cutting week. How you feeling, brother? I feel great, man. 12 weeks of preparation in the bag. And now it's like just focus on weight cut. And that's it. And get ready to perform the easy part. Listen, when I reached out to you earlier today, you said I'm going to run to the grocery store. So, so that, I th thought that would be an interesting thing to talk about. Listen, it's, it's, it's fight week. You got to cut weight. What kind of things are you buying at the grocery store today? Going to the grocery store at a time like this is a true test of discipline. Because when I'm not in fight shape or fight camp, I eat like a gluttonous slob. So when I go through those aisles, it's like I want to buy everything. But honestly, keep it real simple. I stop eating carbs. I hydrate a lot this week. I switch to fats, avocados, vegetables, straight proteins. Anything that uh, doesn't really fill you up, I'm eating it. Egg whites, all that stuff. And uh, this is the hardest part of the whole fight camp right here. But uh, we're four or five days out. We're ready to go. Jimmy, your diet, right? Do you have a strength and conditioning person or, or, for, or somebody that helps you with that? Or is that self-learned from your diet as far as cutting weight and you know that type of thing, keeping your strength? No, trial and error, all on my own. And uh, I'll be honest, I, I take pride in my conditioning and my strength. And, uh, you know, even with the diet now, like every weight cut is getting a little bit easier. And every time I get into that cage, I got even a little bit more pop in my step. So it's like this, there's really no formula to it. You know, it's it, it's kind of based off how I'm, I'm feeling. And uh, I take, you know, I take what works and I stick with that. And a little bit more research here and there in other fields. And I add that to the process. Excellent, excellent. Listen, Iron Workers Forty. How's the how's work? How's and you oh, listen? One of the reasons, I, and I hate to say this because I because I, you're so skilled too. I hate to say Jimmy's like the hardest worker. He's an iron worker and he's a union guy. Plus, he's finding time to train. I think that sounds a little bit like it, I'm taking away from your talent because Jimmy Drago is super talented too, along with having that work ethic. How's work been? I know it's a struggle sometimes because you're trying to you know work a full time job. A lot of guys are you know in the gym much more than you have much more time in the gym than you do how's work been how's the support i know those guys love you to death over there and i'm looking forward to you know to hearing them at the fight yeah god bless local 40 man it's besides my fight career and my wife and my family of course local 40 has been one of the biggest blessings in my life and uh work has been great you know i uh i was working at a job over in harlem and uh we're one floor away from topping the building out and i i told them listen man i've been connecting this whole job uh I got this title fight in four weeks. I'm going to take four weeks off. And, uh, you know, I kind of just took, so I did about eight weeks of training while I'm working. And then I took this last four weeks off to just focus on, you know, the nitty gritty part of the camp when the body starts breaking down and the diet starts getting more strict, you know, like I'll be honest, man, cutting weight and training is easy when you get to sleep in, when you're cutting weight and eating 2000 calories a day, burning 6,000 calories a day, between work and training two sessions after work, it gets difficult. I mean, I've been doing it for years, so like I, I've learned to manage, but you know, I feel like when I first started iron work and I had something to prove. So I would train and work up until the week before the fight. Now it's like, you know, seven years later, it's like eight years later, whatever it's been. Like I got this title fight coming up. Hey, I'm, I'm taking time off for a few weeks and uh, man, they had no problem with it. Iron work is, you know, local 40 is the best, best union in the world, man. It really is it, the camaraderie and the brotherhood in that local. And, uh, man, it, it, you got, you got 2000 guys just like me in there, just all trying to, you know, do the best they can for themselves and their families. And listen, they make for a fun night at the flights because they come and support you and they're loud and you can hear them, you know, chanting your name and things like that. So shout out to the iron workers. I'm a, I'm a union guy myself been in a union, USPS, NALC for 34 years. So, you know, we all put the work in. Jimmy's putting the work in. Animals, Yonkers, talk to me a little bit about camp. Who, who's who been, you know, who you've been, you know, rolling around with getting you ready for this fight, Jimmy? Yeah, man, I've been training with some, some real good guys, man, over at Animals, man. And, uh, you know, I've been one thing I tried to focus on a lot this camp was uh, wrestling and striking with, with, with bigger guys. You know, I, I noticed it so is, is a very skilled fighter. And one thing more than <clears throat> my last opponent is he looks a little bit bigger at 170 than my last opponent. So I wanted to get acclimated to sparring with and rolling around with 185ers, you know, guys that are not, you know, obviously 185 right now, but like they fight at 185. So they're walking around at 200, 205, 210 pounds. 
and getting used to wrestling and cage defense with the bigger bodies and sparring with the bigger bodies. And, and that's been a main thing that I tried to, you know, press on this camp. And just to mention a few names, Greg Stiles, Victor Mena, uh, a buddy of mine, an Egyptian friend, Mo, all have helped me out tremendously during this camp. Uh, obviously, my striking coach, Butters, has been phenomenal. And, uh, you know, I, I do my own strength and condition, and I take pride in that. And I think we've had a bulletproof camp so far. Jimmy, the the, the, te- the technical part, besides on the mat, like the uh, mental part and and studying your opponent, do you do any of that? Like, it's so, he, listen, he's only been in the country for four years, and he's already fighting, you know, fighting for the ring of combat title, but you, you've been training along. It's pretty amazing when you look at your opponent, you know, how far he's come in four years, not to take anything away from the path that you've taken, but do you do any studying of his fights? If you even look at your opponent, do you leave that to your coaches? What kind of preparation do you take, you know, as far as matching up with your opponent? I mean, listen, everybody at this level is good. You're not fighting anybody that's not good, you know, and, and all credit to Itso for being where he's at in four years. I mean, I watch his videos, my coach watches his videos and, uh, you know, we dissect from there and, <clears throat> He's fought some game guys. He's fought for the PFL twice, two wins with them, one being a knockout. And, uh, you know, we, we, I'm not going to say we game plan, but like we prepare for the worst and plan for the best. And that's what we do for eight to 12 weeks straight. And we just go nonstop. And it doesn't matter who they put in front of us. It, we're going to work at what we're good at and we're going to prepare for what they're good at. And it, like it's, it doesn't matter if it was Itso or Gilbert Burns in front of us. It's, it's, it's the same game plan, and it's hard work and discipline every damn day. Now, you listen, the grind and the mental part, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's dive into that a little bit more. You know, you're married now. You have a wife. How is she with, with the support? Because, like, you're, listen, the fighter's life is, is rough, Jimmy. You know that, man. Like I said, finding time for your spouse, for your loved ones, sometimes you probably feel like, you know, you're cheating them a little bit. But I know that, you know, she, you're married. She wants the best for you. She knows you're, you're, you're trying to do that for both of you. Talk to me a little bit about that. About yeah, my wife, my wife is a champion, man. She, she's more of a champion than I am. I mean, to take on the things behind the scenes, not get the glory for it, you know, words go beyond what she's done for us, you know, and the family during these fight camps. I mean, the little, you know how many loads of laundry this poor woman has done over the last 12 weeks? Man, every day coming home, you know, soaking wet, like looking like I jumped out of a fucking pool. Um, the cooking, the food, the meals, the getting everything ready, letting me sleep in, taking care of the dogs, you know, just anything to make my life easier, she does. And, you know, I am aware of that. I thank her every day for it. And uh, she knows this is like a temporary thing. You know, it, it's it's 12 weeks of our lives that we, we put to the side and we, we sacrifice. And like she sacrifices her personal time. I sacrifice a lot of my time. You know, like we spoke about this in the last interview. I spend a lot of time by myself, you know, and, and that gets to people. It gets to me, you know, that isolation factor. You know, who the hell wants to run sprints? Who the hell wants to do this after work? Who the hell wants to be out until nine o'clock at night? Nobody. You know, sometimes I think about like what I'm doing on a daily basis and think to myself, Jesus Christ, you'd have to be mentally fucking ill to even consider this. But this is the path that I believe chose me. Because in order to choose this path, I, I think you have to have something mentally, you know, off with an individual to say, I think this is a good idea. Let me get let me let me contribute all my time into iron work and and uh, combat fighting. Well, listen, I'm glad to hear you have such such good, good, a good teammate and a wife, because that's super important. Talking about other things that are important give some shout outs to your sponsors. Listen, I know. We talk about it all the time. Every time we talk, because there's just so many things with, you know, the, the cost, the time. I know you got some great sponsors to so give them some love because, listen, I love these guys that you're getting ready to give love to. I love them, too, because we wouldn't be able to do this without guys like your sponsors taking care of fighters because you're not making that much money. Let's face it. You're not getting paid enough money. Number one, number two, you talked about the loneliness and, and that type of thing. So give some love out to those people that are trying to help you because they are so important. So a lot of sponsors, you know, a lot of sponsors on the back of the shirt have been with me for the last few fights. 
and uh, you know, some are new. They all know who they are. And, and the reason why sponsoring is so, is so important in this fight camp is because when you take off four weeks from work and everything starts to pile up on you, you can't just rely on ticket sales to stay afloat. And all of these sponsors, some new, some that have been with me, have been loyal to me from the get-go, and it's because they believe in me. And, and I'm truly grateful for every single one of them, and they help pick up the slack when I'm not able to work for the last four weeks. So I'm truly grateful for all of those sponsors. And I, 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 got, I got 13, 14 of them on the back of the shirt. They all know who they are, you know, and, and they already know how grateful I am for all of them. They're the ones that make this possible. Well, listen, I'm grateful to them and I'm grateful for you for listen. Like I said, I'm able to go come to the fights, commentate, go in an interview because you guys work hard. You leave it all out there. I'm a fan, Jimmy, win or lose. I know you don't want to hear that. Jimmy, win or lose. I'm a fan. I'll be a fan for the rest of your life just because of, of, of who you are and what you do. And I wish you nothing but the best of skills and best of luck with your final preparations and your weight cut. And I'm excited to see you in person again. Ring of Combat 81, Jimmy Drago going for the gold, going for the championship. And uh, listen, he works hard and he fights hard and he's an exciting Jimmy. Thanks for giving me some time, man. Can't wait no to see problem. you. Thank you. Have a great night.